Welcome to the best filmmaking extravaganza of the year. My name is Tony De Niro and I'm the director and writer of The Dark Knight Scourge. The Dark Knight Scourge is a fan passion project in the Dark Knight Christopher Nolan trilogy. And it really is um, the connection between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. Our main character in this film is Max Court and he's a disgraced police officer who killed his wife uh, while under the influence of the Scarecrow's fear gas from Batman Begins. And so that's how uh, the story from Batman Begins gets spread into the Dark Knight. So we follow this police officer who's been disgraced and he looks to redeem himself. He looks for a symbol and something to do. And when he's saved by Batman, he decides that by becoming a vigilante and fighting crime again, he can finally redeem himself and find that uh, sense of meaning his life has lost since he um, did a lot of terrible acts. This is targeted for everyone, to be a great crime thriller, to be a drama. And the fact that Batman's in there is really just a bonus. I relate this movie more to Jaws than Batman because every fan film that I've seen with Batman, he talks too much, he does things that Batman wouldn't do. And I look at Batman as a monster. So we treated this whole movie with Batman as a monster. We would barely get to see him, just like the shark in Jaws, and that's what makes him terrifying. The fight scenes of this movie were choreographed by myself and the producer, Colby Nadel, who played Batman conveniently. And we would just spend time in my apartment or his apartment coming up with amazing Batman moves, taking out each other, finding ways to throw batarangs and shoot grapple guns. But as soon as you get to set, everything changes. The dynamics change. Sometimes there's extra people or extra people in the background, and sometimes there's not enough. So really, we choreographed on set. And we would just have to trust ourselves and the people that we're acting with it to help us come up with ideas and help us to make the best fight cool. scene possible. All right, moving on. All right, awesome. The best part of the filmmaking process was definitely the first time Batman was on set because every, like, everyone stopped what they were doing as soon as the actor, who's actually our producer, Colby Nadel, as soon as he walked out in the Batman costume, everyone just stopped and we're all just like a bunch of six-year-olds going, that's Batman. And it was beautiful to actually see that character come to life in front of my eyes for the first time. It's a very dark film because it's Batman. So the A7S had this amazing ability to make dark settings look very light and very cinematic. The footage we have looks like it came right out of Batman Begins. And as soon as I saw that, as soon as Thomas McCarthy showed me that, he convinced me immediately. The Sony A7S II um, is a full frame camera that can shoot 4K internally, which gives it a very, very, very nice, crisp, clean image. The reason behind uh, deciding to use this camera was because the amazing low light capabilities that this camera has and it can produce such an amazing image in low light. When you make student films, everything's hard. Everything, the cards are stacked against you. It's hard to get permission to film places. It's hard to convince actors to take their valuable time for a movie they're not making any money on. So finding dedicated people to work on the movie and finding uh, the right way to make it with the limited resources you have, it's very difficult and it's something that I've tried to become much better at throughout my college career. You have to start out with a dedicated group of people behind you, because otherwise you're not going to do anything. You're not going to be able to get anything done. For me, we have a core group of uh, four or five guys who are on set every day, who help with the script writing process, with production, and now that we're moving into the editing process, these people are 24-7 putting this first in their lives. People like Thomas McCarthy, who's a camera wizard, or uh, Colby Nadel, who's a fantastic producer, or Gage Eccleson, who is an amazing sound person, and all I have to do is coordinate them together, as well as coordinate the actors, because I think my main job is getting the performance from the actors. You could say I have the hardest job, but I think it's the easiest job because I let the professionals do their work and I just find a way to funnel that into the best possible outcome. We think it's the best organized film we've ever made and like you look at the shots and the acting and some of the story and I think it's one of the best things we've ever made, if not the best thing. So watching our three years of working together culminate into one thing, we get through things so efficiently, we get better shots than we ever would have. So just watching that experience actually manifest itself in front of us 
is amazing if you see the, the fruits of your labor. You don't have to sign up for anything or pay any money to see this movie. We're gonna be releasing it on YouTube for the masses because this is not a movie for, you know, the 1%. This is a movie for the people. Ev anyone can see it on YouTube or um, I'm sure we, is there an Iron Zoo website? Yeah, you can see, the main way to see this video is uh, on YouTube. We'll be releasing it in the summer. It's our big summer blockbuster, yes. the end of our college career. So go on to YouTube, find Iron Zoo Productions on Facebook, and you can find out about all of the movies we're going to be making. Any release dates, special behind the scenes, uh, any promo videos or pictures, and it's all gonna be there.